You know, I'm a big fan of the BBC Robin Hood series 2006 to 2009. I've reacted to it on this channel, uh, so I know a lot of you are fans of it as well. And only recently, I finally got around to listening to the Big Finish audiobooks. They put out a release of these in 2021, but I assume they've been out for ages. This is just like a re-release where they've put them all together in one package, I believe, uh, calling it Robin Hood the Complete Series, which doesn't make a lot of sense um, because, <laughs> look, it's it's definitely not a complete series any way I look at it. It's got six stories, six episodes. They're all set during series three of the um, of the show, um, so they're all kind of slotted in between other episodes in series three. You can actually find out exactly where they take place in the series. It says that on the Big Finish website. But these aren't even all of the BBC Robin Hood audiobooks that are out there. They did a few of the um, series one episodes as audiobooks. Uh, so, so I don't know where the complete series comes from. But yeah, like I said, this is six stories, all separate to the show's stories, though, you know, overlaps. Um, and all set, like I said, during series three, which is really interesting because series three I don't know, my opinions of it have changed a lot over time and, and these audiobooks have, have had a little effect on that as well, which I'll talk about. So if this is the kind of thing that you like watching on YouTube, <laughs> that this is your niche, Robin Hood BBC audiobooks from Big Finish, then you're, you're watching the right video. I'll talk a little bit around the stories, but no spoilers here. So if, you're, if you think you might be keen to listen to them, you should be fine to watch this first. And again, because this is all taking place inside series three, there's really nothing major to spoil. No major plot points or character development can occur in these stories because they are slotted in between other stories. Although here's one uh, nitpicky hyperfan thing. This is clearly Guy's fit from series two, not series three. So it makes no sense that we're seeing that on the cover. Let's move on. I enjoyed these a lot. They're reasonably well written and very well produced uh, stories. This is the first time I've listened to anything on Big Finish, which is a surprise to myself because I'm such a big Doctor Who fan, but I haven't gotten into any of the other Big Finish stuff until now. Robin Hood is what brought me in, and uh, I'm impressed by these, and they really essentially feel like the show, which is one of my favorite things about each of these six episodes, is you can really imagine uh, these being as filmed episodes, and I really wonder if they were in contention. I have to imagine so, that when they were planning out the, the series, um, that these were some of the ideas like that they were tossing about and thinking, should we make this one an episode or if we don't, we can do an audio book. It did strike me too though, that um, it would be weird to come across these without having seen the show. Super weird. Like imagine you're just strolling through the internet uh, and you're like, oh, I like, you know, the old stories, the classic tales of Robin Hood and his merry men. And oh look, there are these audio books here that someone's produced. Why don't I listen to those and get my fix of Robin Hood? I think if you did that, you'd be baffled as to what is going on here. Why? <laughs> like they don't introduce any of the characters or character dy dynamics or this particular Robin Hood setting at all. It really is like the next episode of the show. And even more than that, again, I keep saying, it's series three. Series three is a weird season of TV. It has a lot of baggage. They're playing with everything from the first two series. And those things are kind of included in these audiobooks. And I just don't think you'd be able to listen to these uh, without having seen the show and, and and get a nice Robin Hood experience. There's so much assumed character knowledge. That's what I wrote in my notes. That's quite succinct and to the point. Great voices here. So we've got Jonas Armstrong, David Harewood, Sam Troughton, and Richard Armitage reading across these episodes. It is very fun to hear them doing the voices of not only their own characters, but the characters of their castmates as well. He saw the sheriff's boots walking over and clutched tightly at the edges of his sackcloth hood. Begging in the marketplace, eh? bellowed the sheriff. Like I said, it's really easy to imagine some of these episodes as how they would look. As you're listening to them, it's impossible not to see the episode. Particularly because I'd say most of these are really along the lines of things we've seen before. I mean, the Witchfinders is 
the sheriff's plan to root Robin out by hiring some witch finders to go after him. He may wear the guise of a simple man, but Robin Hood is in league with the devil himself. Friendly Fire is about Robin accidentally killing an innocent peasant and reckoning with that uh, mistake. And uh, of course, it, it's a heavy burden on, on our noble Robin. I killed an innocent man today, Tuck. That's how my story ends. As easy as that? There's nothing easy about this. The Dam Busters is the sheriff using technology against uh, Robin and his gang. The sheriff was practically bouncing up and down now and was delighted to be able to reveal his scheme at last. What do you think? He said with a grin. What a marvellous work of engineering. What vision. What ingenuity. Wait until you see inside. Each of these just has so much DNA in common with episodes of the show that we've seen before. Uh, and that's something that's really actually quite nice and relaxing about it. It really is like just getting more of the show that I love. Some of these episodes like The Deer Hunters, where there's been a white stag spotted and everyone's kind of after it, in a way takes things back to basics in a way that's uh, really enjoyable. 50 in gold or a royal pardon for any man, no questions asked. If he be the one to bring Prince John, Robin looked up at the others, his eyes wide in astonishment. Bring him what? asked Little John. The intact hide of the fabled white stag, seen in days past in the forest south of Sherwood Rise. It doesn't have all the, the big drama of, of a late series, a series two or series three. Um, it's really a back to basics Robin Hood story, quite contained. You get to have the characters uh, intermingle a little bit, which I think the smaller scale stories work best in these audiobooks. And that brings me to a couple of them that are actually quite unique and don't just follow the, the general Robin Hood story formula. We've got one called The Tiger's Tale, which is predominantly set in the Holy Land. And it's a flashback with just, uh, with Robin and Much uh, having to protect King Richard against enemies in the Holy Land. And that surprised me. Uh, it was just quite a different story amongst these six. Our fighting is over, it seems, said the king quietly. For now, sire, said Robin. Our new mission is to live to fight another day. And even though I wish that story had gone a lot further in terms of it was a bit lighter and more nothing burger than I expected, but still it was an enjoyable bit of colour. We so rarely got to see the Holy Land in the show that um, seeing this history with Robin and Much and, and how they were behaving before we met them is really fascinating. But I believe the best and most intimate of these stories is the last one. It's called The Siege and it's essentially a bottle episode between Robin and Guy. They get, uh, this is when they've teamed up, so this is late series three and uh, they get stuck together, trapped in a, in a castle, uh, surrounded by enemies. And it's just the two of them, and they have to spend a whole night there together and, and, uh, and fight off these enemies together. You're not so bad, really, Robin said to Guy. To Guy of Gisborne. All right, said Guy, sloshing wine into his goblet. To me. That one, I think, really actually manages to tell you more about the characters than we got in the show, which I think makes this whole exercise more than worth it. Also, of course, as a part of the intrinsic nature of these being stories told by a narrator, uh, we are getting more of a glimpse sometimes into the characters' minds and thoughts than you do just by watching them on, on, a, on TV. And I think through all these episodes, the character of Guy gets a lot out of it. I don't know if it's just partly because Richard Armitage reads a lot of these, but a lot of these stories err towards giving Guy new dimensions. And so if you're a fan of Guy, these stories hold that extra bit of punch. We have Guy traumatized by images of Marion. Marion's gossamer figure smiled fondly at him. A smile he'd often dreamed of but seldom seen. The expression must have burned itself on his memory for him to summon it so vividly to life. 
We have him reckoning with becoming one of the good guys, which was uh, quite fast in the show and, and it glossed over. And it's nice to be able to spend some more time in that. On the flip side of that, characters like uh, Alan and John don't get much um, airtime across these episodes, but that's true of series three in general. Instead, we get a, a decent bit of the new characters of uh, Brother Tuck and Kate and Isabella. And a bit of Prince John, which is delightful. The very thought of it, said Prince John with a pained expression, fills you with glee and excitement. And series three has all of these different elements to pick and choose from when you're writing an episode, I suppose. And I think that's one of the reasons I've always felt a bit weird about it. I mean, there's the element where it's always felt a bit like fan fiction because it takes things in such a different direction to series one and series two. And suddenly, you know, lost relations and new romantic entanglements and love triangles. And it's all a bit, oh, we're just kind of we don't care, we're just, what's fun, stir the pot. And I think that's partly why I rejected it a little bit when I, when I first saw it years and years ago. Um, compared to series one and two, I just found it less self-serious in a negative way. But that's why it has grown on me over time. Because of course it is doing a lot of silly things. But amongst all that, a lot of the kind of development that it, it brings to its characters is interesting. And uh, at the end of these audiobooks on Big Finish, there's actually an episode where they've just interviewed um, each of the, the readers, each of the cast who read the episodes, and they were just coming hot off shooting series three. And it's interesting to hear the, the enthusiasm as they talk about it. They really gave series three a lot. They were trying to take it to the next level. They were thinking quite a bit about where the characters are going after series two and what, what fresh elements they could mine uh, within kind of these portrayals of their characters. That plus every time I rewatch series three, it's, it's really not as bad as I initially thought, has made me think over time, I'm just coming to be a series three lover. And I know a lot of you out there have never disliked it. It's, it's always been, you know, up there, top tier with the rest of the show. But um, I had an initial disappointment when I saw it the first time and I've been building myself back up from there. And these audiobooks have been a part of that journey for me. And I'm just really glad that they exist because stories are special because they end. And sure, we, we only got a few years of this show and then it ended and that kind of makes what we got even more special, but to find these audiobooks and the characters are alive in them, the same characters from the show, and it just, it extends out the life of this story by a little bit. It's reminded me why I love stories and, and fantasy worlds. Once you fall in love with a, a place or a group of people, then it's an absolute treat to be there, no matter what's happening there, no matter what they're doing. And that's how I feel about these audiobooks. Just a real treat. Extended the magic that bit longer. Now, there are a couple of criticisms I'll say because, you know, I'm talking about these audiobooks and no one else on YouTube is because it's a stupid niche. But um, I'll say I, I find them slightly overproduced in places. I don't need the sound effects or um, the music, um, musical interludes. And there's even, there's one bit where they applied so many effects to a voice that was like in the distance and echoey that I couldn't understand what it was saying exactly. Um, but that's, that's a real minor issue and a real brief moment. Other than that, I mean, Big Finish obviously produces these very well and they sound brilliant and the voices are just amazing. All of the readers do brilliantly, but if I had to pick favorites, um, Richard Armitage is obviously the winner. He's just, what a rich voice, reading all the characters. He does great voices for all of them, um, but close runner up for Sam Troughton because uh, it's just fun to hear much doing all the, the characters' voices. That's particularly fun. My favorite episodes of these, I'll pick two. Um, one is The Siege, obviously, that bottle episode with Robin and Guy. Mwah. And the second one I'll pick is on the far opposite end, The Deer Hunters, which is just a silly, simple, contained, straightforward little episode with Prince John and Robin and Much get paired up and uh, John and Alan get a little bit to do. 
and uh, yeah that's just a really that's the other side of things we've got the the deep kind of introspection with with Robin and Guy in the siege and the deer hunters is just the gang having fun love that again it's a bit of a shame that these stories couldn't do whatever they wanted um, and change things and have big um, plot developments because they're technically prequels but still I'm so glad I listened to these they are proof of the lasting power of a good story well told and we are Robin Hood.